sex, drugs, rock and roll, and fragile egos. That's what being in a band is truly all about. A successful band can last years and safely navigate the loss and addition of new members, except that sometimes the band so hates their departed partner in crime that they do everything they can to erase his very existence. Here's a look at some band members that famous bands want you to forget about. Dave Navarro, Red Hot Chili Peppers. After the original guitarist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers died of a heroin overdose in 1988, the band implemented a revolving door policy, bringing in several short-term replacements. The most famous was former Jane's Addiction Axeman Dave Navarro, who played on the Red Hot Chili Peppers album One Hot Minute. It turns out that was a pretty accurate album title, because in 1998, the band dumped him in a press release. And when the Red Hot Chili Peppers were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2012, they conspicuously left Navarro off the list of officially enshrined band members. The band's lawyers said it was due to technical restrictions imposed by the Hall of Fame and not a personal grudge. But only Navarro knows for sure. Mitch Malloy, Van Halen. Everyone knows that Van Halen has toggled back and forth between lead singers Sammy Hagar and David Lee Roth for years, and most fans recall that at one point the band recorded an album with a third lead singer, former extreme vocalist Gary Sharon. But did you know that Van Halen actually had a fourth lead singer for a short time? Yep, his name was Mitch Malloy. But after recording some music with the band, he decided all the drama just wasn't worth it and simply quit rather than take the gig full time. That's why nobody knows about this. Cause they kept it quiet and I kept it quiet until recently. Peter Chris, Kiss. In the 70s, a KISS concert offered a little something for everyone, including a solo number by drummer Peter Criss, who would be left alone on stage to sing along to an orchestral backing track on the very unkiss ballad he wrote called Beth. It would become one of the band's biggest hits, but that didn't count for much with KISS co-founders Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. The pair fired Chris in 1980, hiring Eric Carr as a replacement, and went so far as to have Carr record a new version of Beth for their Greatest Hits album in order to totally erase Chris from their catalog. <sighs> That's cold. Jeff Nichols, Black Sabbath. Things that are metal. Power chords, songs about the devil and going crazy, and Ozzy Osbourne's Black Sabbath had all of those things. But they also had the rather unmetal element of a keyboard player. His name was Jeff Nichols, and he was a full time, regular, long time member of Black Sabbath, whose parts were easy to hear on every Sabbath record recorded between 1980 and 1995. But since it just wasn't metal to have a keyboardist, he often played backstage during their live concerts so the audiences couldn't see him. Sounds like Nichols was the real Wizard of Oz. Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Hugh McDonald. Bon Jovi. The official bass player for Bon Jovi throughout the 80s and all the way to 1994 was Alec John Such, a guy who, like the rest of the band, had glorious hair and big white teeth. But he wasn't the band's only bassist. In fact, a guy named Hugh McDonald recorded a lot of the band's songs, including the album Keep the Faith. Unfortunately for McDonald, he was 10 years older than the rest of the band and didn't fit in with their look. So they kept him in the studio while parading younger dudes out on stage. Now that everyone in Bon Jovi is well into middle age though, that doesn't matter so much anymore. And McDonald was finally made an official band member in 2016. So you could probably stop petitioning them about it. Daryl Jones, The Rolling Stones. In 1992, bassist Bill Wyman left the self-proclaimed world's greatest rock and roll band after more than 30 years. His successor, an accomplished jazz bassist named Daryl Jones, has since been with the Stones for almost as long, and yet he's rarely in official photographs and sometimes not even in the band's music videos. At the end of a show, Jones sort of meanders around with the backing vocalists while the guys, you know, Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, Rod Wood and Charlie Watts take charge and get everyone lined up for a final bow. But Jones is more than a touring musician. He's the bassist on almost every Stones recording since 1994. What gives? Well, Jones technically isn't an official member of the band, which is why the Stones treat him like a hired gun instead of giving him his due. Paul Rudd, ACDC. 
legendary hard rock band ACDC is on an indefinite hiatus following Brian Johnson's retiring from touring due to health problems, bassist Cliff Williams' reluctance to tour, and Malcolm Young suffering from dementia. On the band's website, all those guys are listed along with longtime guitarist Angus Young and original singer Bon Scott, who died in 1980. Even Stevie Young, Malcolm Young's nephew and successor, and Chris Slade, who drummed for the band in the early 90s and on the band's 2015 tour are listed. Curiously, nowhere on that roster is Phil Rudd, the guy who kept the rhythm for the legends for the better part of 40 years. Why? Well, a couple of years ago, he was sentenced to eight months of house arrest in New Zealand for meth possession and also threatening to kill a guy. The good news? The charge that he had tried to hire a hitman was eventually dropped, along with all references to Rudd on the band's website. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.